Hi everybody, welcome back to my Crafty Den. So I am doing part two of a series on how to DIY your traveler's notebook um, on a budget. So I have this uh, B6 size traveler's notebook. It's part of my 1000 subscriber giveaway and I am going to make an insert for it. So the first thing I'm going to, the first thing that I did was check the size on the computer. Like I went on and Googled the dimensions for inserts for B6. Um, this is a B6 wide, I believe. So it's, it's a nice chunky one. So a B6 insert will fit in here and leave lots of overhang and place for a pen to tuck down in there. And I did some double checking. I always double check when I'm doing measurements and things like that so gotta do that you don't want to make a mistake um, I have this sketchbook that I got uh, cheap at one of the local stores um, I doodled in it a bit and did some some uh, writing and things like that and checked some paint qualities and and markers and you know so I was checking the paper quality basically and I'm gonna take 15 pages first I'm counting to see if there's 15 pages in there uh, 15 pages um, folded in half will give you 30 sheets and then on each side of the page being a page that gives you a 60 page notebook that's a huge notebook but I thought it would make a really nice sketchbook like a smaller size sketchbook. Not everybody wants to carry a great big sketch pad around with them to uh, to draw on or doodle in or do whatever it is that you like to do. But it's nice to have a sketchbook in your TN. So I'm, I've counted the pages. I'm just going to go through and I'm ripping these pages out of this book. Um, they're great. The quality of the paper for the price is really awesome. Nice and thick. It took the paper, it took pencil crayon, it took pen, it took marker. It did a lot of things really, really good. So thinking of doing these on a budget, um, go to Dollar Tree or Dollarama um, and get yourself a sketchbook and make your um, your own insert DIY your own insert for your TN the the paper you the paper quality for the price that you pay is you're not going to get anything better i mean you can't buy awesome quality paper but one of the things that i did know or did notice is that you can buy some watercolor paper at uh, dollar tree and i've seen it there and um so you could even make yourself a uh, a little watercolor notebook if you wanted to to put in in your um, TN so it's pretty easy to do it and, and these are the steps that I use this is the first step and I'm just having a little bit of trouble here trying to stack this paper because it's been ripped off that coil ring and all those edges are catching on each other so the first thing that I'm gonna do and my paper trimmer is getting so worn at the top here that I can't see the numbers. See where I'm pointing right now? Oh my gosh, you can't see the numbers and half the lines are gone. So I'm trying to guess from, I think I, the number nine, I think nine inch mark is on there. And I want just under seven inches. So I'm, yeah, I had to get my ruler. <laughs> I have to do it that way, check and double check. And then I think what I finally did was get that first piece lined up and then make a little pen tick so that I could line my other papers up on it. and uh, But I'm doing this, I'm not fast forwarding it through all of this repetitious stuff because what, I, what I've done is I really want you to see that in under half an hour you can sit down and make your own um, insert. And this is a lot of pages too. If you're doing a monthly insert, you need like 12 pages folded in half and you can do a day on every page if you want to. Um, if you're just needing a little notes insert, it doesn't have to be that many pages. It doesn't have to be heavy paper. Just use some good quality printer paper. It'll work just as well. And so the first, the first measurement that I always cut is the height because they're all going to be the same height 
but depending on how much paper you put together when you fold it in half it if you if you have folded chunks of paper in half you'll know what I'm talking about here when you fold them in half um, each sheet gets shoved out further than the sheet before it so it kind of uh, creates a mountain on your outside edge the edge where you open the, your turning edge um, so you don't want that so I'm not even going to cut that measurement right now just the height measurement and I'm going to do that very last the um, the width of my book so cut your measurement your height measurement and stack all your papers together and um, and kind of you'll have to decide on a few things what you're going to bind it with are you just going to use uh, a thread are you going to use a ribbon are you going to use um, I just use some butcher's twine type of string that I got at the dollar store I have a roll of that so I like that and I and I do I sew all my uh, notebooks together because it's for me it's easier I, you could staple them if you don't have very many sheets and you have one of those long arm staplers but I don't so uh, this is the easiest way for me but um, yeah, so it's taken me a long time to do this, or it feels like it's taking me a long time to do this, probably because I'm watching it and going over with a voiceover and I want it to get on to the next step. Um, but yeah, it's it's really not long at all. I think I'm about uh, six minutes into the video and I've done an intro and got my paper out and ripped it out and um, stacked it and got my first cut here. So yeah, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not dawdling along really um the reason i'm doing a voiceover on this is because i'm actually watching a movie while i do this um yeah sometimes you have to combine two things in one if you want to do them so <laughs> that's just my life um but i would measure here because i want to make sure when i fold this over that i have at least my five inches and a little bit of extra for trimming so I'm just going to, I fold it over and then I'm really just pushing down and not doing a good crease, just pushing down with my thumb to get that first bit of a fold there. And you can't crease this many pieces of paper and get a good crease on any of them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take out two, three sheets at a time and I'm going to use my bone folder and get a good crease. And you might not think that you have to do this, but it's kind of important because that good crease is going to allow these pieces of paper to fit right snug tight down into that same spot down the spine. So all your pages are going to fit tightly together when you've got a good crease. So just you, that's all I'm doing. I'm just using that fold that I made with my thumb and I'm giving these all a good crease and then see how I'm just pushing them back in and stacking them together. It does, it looks like I'm just doing the same thing over and over again, but that's because I'm taking out two, three, I think sometimes I did three, four, like, you know, use your judgment, but make sure you get that good crease. It's, it is important. See, I grabbed too many there and had to take some out. So go on for some more. And uh, yeah, so I hope you're enjoying this series. I hope you enjoyed last week's and, and that um, by now you've made your own cover. If you've got one of those placemats and, and uh, but I mean, a lot of people are pretty close to a Dollarama or a Dollar Tree and you can go and buy those plastic placemats. And just think how cheap, like Dollar Tree has them usually has some really cute little patterns. I got my first one, I think maybe at Dollarama, that had the leaf pattern on it. I can't remember if that one was Dollar Tree or not. But, uh, but yeah. So make them all nice and snug. Tightly, tightly, tightly together in the middle, as tight as you can get them. And at this point, you can throw a bulldog clip on the top and bottom edges of your papers if you want to to hold them together so they don't shift sorry i got in front of my camera there a little bit um but 
yeah, I'm I'm going to show you how to make the holes. So, and if you're doing this for the first time, be sure you put a bulldog clip on there so they don't move. This paper is not shiny. I always put a bulldog clip on printer paper because it slides it slides apart too easy. But this has a bit of a um, a grain on it. This paper, so it's staying together pretty good for me. So get your phone book, and if you still have a phone book or a book that'll open up so that you get that valley in the middle and put the spine of your notebook right down into that valley so it'll hold those papers together and then using your pokey hole po pokey tool just poke three holes through like I'm doing you can measure if you want to make sure your spacing's perfect but you know these are going inside my TN it's just to hold the pages together I'm not trying to uh you know, win an accuracy award or anything. So that's all I did was just poke three. I just eyeballed it. And I've grabbed my darning needle. This has a, a blunt point on it. And I like it because you don't separate your thread if you go through it by accident. And this is the butcher twine that I was telling you about. It's a cotton cordage, just like a butcher twine. And I just got it on this roll at um, Dollarama, I think. I can't remember. I might have got it at Dollar Tree. But I actually think that this one came from Dollarama. And I've had it for years. I've made notebooks with these for, with that spool for, gosh, a long, long time. A long, long time. Um, and I used to make the standard ones, so you used a little more. And all my standard sized notebooks I made myself. So you can use lined paper. Um, if you can get some lined paper that's wide enough so that when you fold it, you have your width, you can use that. You could use um, dot grid paper or you could use, um, you know, like the little square grid paper. Any kind of paper that you want to, to make your... Um, your notebooks, your inserts. So I've got my thread ready and I gotta find a cover because I always put a piece of scrapbook paper or a piece of plain craft cardstock. Uh, this isn't, isn't thin paper, this is uh, a, like a cardstock um, scrapbook paper. And the other one was so pretty but it, it didn't fit, there wasn't enough. But this is, this is gonna, and it it's a nice lovely wood grain. Um, I don't know if it's showing up well on your camera or not and my little camera that I'm editing on isn't showing that I'll be able to tell more when I watch it and watch the playback once I get it on my computer. But um, but yeah, just cut your same height that you did your book so that you can wrap it around and then you've got your cover. Like really simple. This is this is easy stuff, nothing really too complicated. You don't need major, um, you know, ma major measurements or anything like that because each insert that you make is going to fit your particular traveler's notebook cover and not necessarily um, the one that I'm making. So, so that's why I'm not giving you a bunch of like a whole ton of measurements. You're going to measure this according to the size of notebook that you want for your um, for your cover. Of course you are. So my cover fits perfectly from top to bottom. And because I hadn't put it on when I poked my holes, I'm just going back through the same holes there to, uh, to include the cover with that. Take just a second to do that. So... My cat just came up on my knee. Can you hear her purring? Um, <laughs> yeah, she just has to be in the middle of things all the time. So I'm going to go in from the center of the notebook to the outside, starting in the middle hole. And straighten that thread out so it doesn't get caught up. Then I'm going to go to the end hole and go back from the outside to the center. So I, uh, I didn't get that hole poked quite.
quite as big around as the other one, I guess. It was a little bit hard to pull through, but it still goes. And then my next one, I'm going to go straight past that center hole, that middle hole, and go to the other end and go from the inside back to the outside. So from the bottom to the top and back through to the outside. And then I'm going to go back through the middle again where I started when I came out the first time. I hope you can understand that. Um, play it back if you have to, to to see what I'm doing. But yeah, so here you kind of want to pay attention to what you're doing. So you want, you've got that center thread running right up from the top to the bottom on the inside there. And you want one of these ends on either side of that long string. See, I'll move it up so you can see it a little bit. See that long string? And I've got one coming out underneath it to the right and one coming out underneath it to the left. So then I'm going to tug this until I get it nice and tight without buckling it. And all I'm going to do is tie a couple of simple knots. Remember, there's nothing pulling on this. There's nothing. So you just need a couple simple knots. And then trim your ends off. And you're done the binding. See how simple that was? Like, yeah, did it take a whole minute? Um, <laughs> I don't think it did. So that's such a, such a simple binding. I love doing that. It... You, there's so many different ways that you can do it. You can do um, very complicated stitching for a binding in a book. There's all kinds of things that you can do, but that's the simplest one, and it's so, so easy. So I'm just referring back to my original rep measurements. My height is 6.9 inches. Now I need 4.9 for my width of my book. So I'm going to take my ruler, and I am going to measure from the spine and I'm going to measure out, and I'm going to measure the 4.9 inches. So because there's a teeny tiny bit of overhang on my ruler, but I use it to make it flush with the spine, I'm going to go to the 5 inch mark, and then the little 8 inch um, marks on the, uh, on the ruler, or the 16th inch marks on the ruler, I'm just going to go back three on each mark and I'm going to line the other the in, the end excuse me I'm going to line the end of the ruler up with the spine so that it's nice and flat I use my finger there to make sure each time and then I'm going to make those marks and I do three simply because if you put one at the top one at the bottom and there's a mistake you're going to cut your paper on an angle if you do three and you've made a mistake on one, it's going to be obvious when you try to line your ruler up on them. And if a mistake can be made, I make it. So, yeah, so just tiny little ticks with my pen is all it took. And then I am going to put this, I'm just throwing this old clipboard down so that I don't cut through my tabletop. And... I'm going to line my ruler up along the edge. Now this ruler has a cork bottom so that it doesn't slide around on the paper. I don't, rem I don't recommend using a plastic ruler to do this and I do recommend a metal one but having the cork on the bottom of the metal one, see the cork? Having the cork on the bottom makes it grip that paper a little bit more so it doesn't slide. So you want to put your pressure on your ruler and push straight down, but you don't put any pressure on your X-Acto knife when you're cutting. Very, very little from, from your finger on the top of your knife there. And just lightly slice over and over again along that ruler edge, and you'll have a nice clean cut that will go right through to the bottom and just keep sliding those cut those uh, cut off pieces out of the way when they build up there get them out of your way and then just keep slicing and don't move the ruler that's the trick that's why the cork on the bottom is really good because it makes a nice rip and doesn't slide around But you'd be surprised at how clean of a cut you, you're going to get this way. 
Um, I'm sure the people that make these notebooks for um, selling for for retail have big paper cutters that they put them in and they can use um, but this is how you do it at home and that's nice and smooth that's a nice flat edge on that outside edge of the book um, I'm stumbling for my words here so excuse me there was a little wee bit of um, uneven at the top see that little tiny bit that's coming off there so I'm just doing the same thing along the top. The bottom seemed pretty good, but the top was a little off. So maybe my cut was slightly off or something, who knows. But you can always trim up any mistakes with that straight edge and your knife. Now, at this point, you're actually done. You've made your insert. But I take my teeny little corner chopper here, and it'll only do about two pages at a time. And I go through and round all these little corners. The only reason I do it is because the edges of my TN are round. And I just think it looks nicer. I don't take the time to do it all the time. Um, but I did decide to do it here to show you that like it can be done. It's um, an added two minutes of work at the end. But I think it's well worth it. Um, I think it looks pretty and gives it makes it look so much more professional. It makes it look finished. I have uh, taken um, inserts that I've bought and thrown them in the box with inserts that I've made. And, you know, a lot of times you buy them and they just have that craft paper cover on them. And I make a lot like that anyway, so I'll throw them in the box. And when I go to get them out, I have to really, really look close and mostly it's just the stitching down the back that will be different. Sometimes theirs are stapled, and I actually prefer them stitched. So, um, yeah, I think that actually making your own sometimes is better. I've made this for $2, and I would pay eight ninety nine um, or more, maybe ten ninety nine for this one because it has quite a few pages in it and the quality of the paper is a heavy sketch paper so yeah you can pay upwards from seven dollars for a small insert um, you know like a um, passport size and for a large size you could pay upwards of twelve dollars like twelve dollars and up for an insert so yeah that's pricey that's pretty pricey for a little notebook so make your own um, also, this is a good way to not spend a ton of money, and like I said before, this is how to figure out if this TN life is going to be for you. If you're going to love a traveler's notebook, you're going to love a traveler's notebook. That's just the way it is. It's, it's, I think it's um, one of those love-hate things. There's no, it's okay for me. You either love it or you hate it, and you just go back to your binder or your... Um, happy planner or whatever. I love both. I love carrying mine with me. I love using them for different things in the house, you know, like I've showed them in my uh, collection and, um, and for my art journals and all kinds of different things. They're just, they're just pretty and the leathers are nice, but I fell in love with them before I ever had a leather cover. So and this is the cover and the notebook style that I used. So there it is. You've made a notebook. Um, I hope you can get one made this week. And I'll see you next week with the uh, next part of this series. And um, I'm just going to throw it in here and show you how well it fits. There's a lot of room from the the front to the back but that's because there's six strings in this book so but when you lift this cover up so that your back is up where it's supposed to be that's how much room you've got about the size of my finger on an overhang and that's just enough room to put a nice chunky pen in there and throw your strap around it which I like and um, yeah so imagine this book now just filled up with notebooks and decorated and it's it's going to be a beautiful book. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. So, 
I'm uh, I'm pretty much done here. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to comment and let me know what you're thinking of this series. And um, I sure do hope you try making your own. So bye-bye for now. And uh, 